Hey, Instant Potheads. Welcome to another episode of Kong Can Cook. Now, I know it's been a while since I've recorded a video. The reason why is that I don't have any camera people uh, around to take it now that the kids are back in school. So I finally uh, went ahead and I bought a new camera. I put it on a tripod. Hopefully, you're able to see me okay out there. At the same time, the Instant Pot Company had a contest and I won myself one of these uh, new Instant Pot Accu SV800 sous vide immersion circulators. I've never used one of these before, so today I'm going to go ahead and try to explain what a sous vide immersion circulator is, well, how it's related to the Instant Pot, and what we can do with it. Whenever we cook, we uh, like staying lubed, right? Uh, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Since this is the uh, first one that we've done in a while, we'll go ahead and dig right into our fabulous grapefruit shandy, one of my favorites, Leinen Kugel. Mm. So good, because all we do is win. And what is sous vide? Sous vide comes from the French word uh, meaning under vacuum and the reason why is uh, it's not just cooking food under vacuum what it is is cooking food in a vacuum sealed bag in a water bath. Why is that important? A water bath can be temperature controlled very precisely unlike in your oven where the temperature fluctuates. You set it to 400 degrees but it can go up and down, it heats up, it cools down, it's never precise. Sous vide takes care of that, and this is especially important because we're going to go ahead and cook a steak. Now imagine a steak sitting in a pot of very accurate water. If you happen to like your steaks medium, like I do, you'll know that you would set the temperature to 135 degrees. And why is that? If you cook a steak exactly to 135 degrees and never let it get above 135 degrees, your steak will never cook more than medium. It's impossible because you've set the temperature to 135 degrees. They will never get hotter. It doesn't cook any more than that. Wow. Now, when you're cooking your steak, you can leave it there at 135 degrees for an hour or two hours or however long until you're ready to eat it and it won't be any worse for the wear. If you're trying to do that same 135 degrees by doing it in a pan or in the oven, uh, by heating the pan to over 400 degrees or the oven, uh, you have it super hot in there, the chance of you missing that perfect 135 degrees, that's like less than a minute. If you turn your back for a minute or more and come back to it, it's way overcooked. And the other problem with cooking a steak conventionally is that as that heat, that super harsh heat radiates in from the outside, the entire steak is not medium. In fact, as you get closer to the edge, it's very much well done. Uh, so it'll be perfectly medium in the middle, and as you go out, uh, not so good. What the sous vide's gonna do is by heating it to exactly the temperature that you want, 135 degrees, for example, the steak will be from edge to edge, 135 degrees. It's, it'll probably taste pretty gross if you ate it like that because then the entire thing is still pink and red. To get the crust that uh, out the outside burnt a little bit just the way you like it at a steakhouse, we go ahead and sear it at the very end in a hot pan over the stove. Okay, uh, that, As we've said before, it, it incorporates the Maillard processes, uh, burning off some of those proteins, turning it into absolute deliciousness. So how is this Instant Pot sous vide related to the Instant Pot electric pressure cooker? Uh, other than being made by the same company, one of the cool things about having this is that it's a standalone product. You don't need an Instant Pot electric pressure cooker in order to use the sous vide uh, device. It does, however, happen to fit our Instant Pot inner pot just perfectly. We'll go ahead and use the inner pot now uh, to practice our sous vide skills. Okay. So here I've got the six quart stainless steel liner uh, from the instant pot. Let's go ahead and open up our sous vide um, machine and see what's inside. Okay. Right, it looks like it comes with a nice uh, manual. Let me open that up. 
We got this uh, the sous vide machine itself again, not a unicorn. And then the only other thing in here is this handy dandy clip. Uh, this clip, I guess we're going to allow it to clip it to the side. Um, if I put it in here like this, and then we'll be able to clip it uh, to the side of the instant pot, and that's probably the best way that's going to work. You know, this doesn't actually fit. It's a little bit short. All right, so clearly uh, I was misled. This does not actually fit the six quart uh, instant pot liner, so you won't be able to use this with it. There's nothing to attach it to here. I'm gonna get a taller pot and let's see what happens. All right. So I grabbed an even bigger pot. Uh, this is a nice big stock pot. Hopefully, uh, yeah. So on this one, I'm able to put the sous vide circulator right here on the edge and we screw this clamp down. Now holds it nice and securely to the side. Other than the perfect steak, what else would you want to make in a sous vide machine? Well, ideal foods for sous vide are things like lamb and beef, of course, uh, pork, chicken, turkey, duck. You can even do shellfish, uh, like fish, lobster tails, and scallops. I've heard that scrambled eggs come out perfect. And why do they do that out of the sous vide? Because we bring it to the exact temperature that the food should be at when you're done regular cooking. But here, since you bring it to that temperature and no higher, you will never overcook it and you can leave it for a long time. So it's also ideal uh, if you're having a big party. Uh, during a party, when people may come at different times, you want to make steaks for everybody. You can have all the steaks prepared and at the proper temperature. And once the, your guests arrive, you cut into the bag and you sear it and it's ready to go. So the sous vide is great for parties. It's great. Um, you'll see this, ha uh, they use it a lot at restaurants for probably that exact same reason, uh, that the food is near its final temperature so that you're able to, when the customer orders that uh, dish, able to get it onto the plate and out to the customer in a timely manner. Imagine like it's a hot jacuzzi in there and your food is in there and it's at the perfect temperature that you want your food to be at. And the water's circulating around and the steak's in there and it's saying, ooh, it's like 135 degrees in here. And over time, say like a half hour to an hour, your entire steak will equalize to 135 degrees. The temperature of the water or the temperature of the steak will come out to be the same. That's because the uh, Immersion circulator is going to keep the water at exactly the temperature we set it to. So the steak has no choice but to come to that temperature eventually. So it's sitting there at 135 degrees and it's all happy because that's a perfect medium. And I'll just say that way. Can it ever get more than medium? No, because it will never be hotter than 135 degrees in here. Because you vacuum seal it, right? That's what sous vide means, under vacuum. We vacuum seal it. It doesn't have to be vacuum sealed. In fact, what we're going to do is use the Archimedes method. Have you heard of Archimedes? He was this Greek uh, philosopher way back when. And he discovered lots of things. Name, one of them was uh, when he answered the king's challenge to find out if the king's crown that he was gifted by someone else was actually made out of gold. One way to know if something's gold is you weigh it and then you take the volume of the whatever the object is and if the weight divided by the volume is the correct density for gold then you know that it must be made out of gold. If it's made out of something lighter then the density would be off. If it was mixed with something heavier then the same thing. So how do you know if the, if the crown was made out of gold or was it something fake? Easy to do if the, if the crown was a complete rectangular brick. Easy to get the volume out of that. How do you have to calculate the volume of a crown that's got hollow parts and pointy parts? Very difficult. So Archimedes thought about this for a very long time. And he was in his bathtub when he realized that once he got into the bath, the water level went up. And the water level went up based on how much volume he took up. 
He was so happy when he discovered this that he ran through the town shouting, Eureka, Eureka, I found it, because he finally figured out how to solve the king's dilemma. He was so happy, he ran through the town naked because he forgot he had no clothes on. And it's a great story about Archimedes. And then what they did was they were able to take that crown, uh, put it into a container of water, knowing how much the water uh, was displaced, how much the water went up, they were able to tell the volume of the crown. Once they weighed the crown, they didn't determine that that crown was not entirely made out of gold. Someone was trying to pull a fast one on the king. The same way that Archimedes used dip stuff into water and had the water level go up, we're going to use that to make our sous vide machine work. Instead of making a fancy uh, vacuum sealer, uh, one of the issues with the normal vacuum sealers that we use is that you can't put liquids in it. Uh, fancier restaurants, they have these contained uh, vacuum machines where the whole thing is under a vacuum and then it just collapses the bag real fast. Uh, those are very expensive. Uh, the normal food, fresh, fresh savers that we have, if you put liquid in there, it's going to get drawn out as part of the vacuum process. So you take a Ziploc bag or any BPA-free plastic bag that's uh, safe for sous vide handling. And once our pot is filled up with water, we put our food and marinade and whatever in the bag. As you drop the bag into the water, the water is going to put pressure on the bag and start forcing all of the air out. It's not a strict vacuum the way a vacuum sealer would suck out all of the air, but it's enough for us to Make a seal without having extra air in there so that the sous vide machine can do its work. So we put, the we put our food in the Ziploc bag and the whole thing uh, gets lowered into the water. And then at the very end, before water gets into the bag, we seal it off and you're ready to go. Sous vide cooking with Kong Can Cook. I guess I was wrong about it being able to fit the inner liner of the Instant Pot because the one that I've got here is just a little too tall. See, it fits my giant stock pot just fine, but when I put it, uh, try to get it to fit here in the instant pot, the clamp is like pretty far above it. Uh, there's no, that's like at least an inch or two. Uh, so there's no way that's gonna work there. Um, so I guess you have to use a tall pot. I've seen people use giant plastic uh, bins for this since you're only making water hot. A lot of the clear plastic, BPA free, uh, Rubbermaid type uh, bins, plastic bins are perfect for your sous vide. So I'm going to buy one of those off Amazon and then we'll probably use that in the future. But for now I've got my big stock pot and we'll start playing with that. Thanks for watching my introduction video to the Instant Pot Sous Vide Machine. If you like this video, go ahead and like it down there. And if you want to see more of these videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified each time a new video comes up. Stay lubed, my friends. And as always, if Kong can cook, so can you, because this is how we're going to do it.